Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. This is your host, Ricardo Silva. And today I'm going to be talking about inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. So if you have uh, been taking my class, then you should be familiar with this topic, but I'm going to give you a little refresher here today. So the first thing I wanna do is basically go to the right side window and uh, I'm going to call up my character joint tool to create a very simple basic leg uh, hierarchy of bones or joints in this case. And as you can see, I have this created here in my object manager. The root could be called the hip. So let's uh, name that the hip because that's kind of like a fixed point. The joint uh, that we have in here, the first one, would probably be uh, our leg. The second one would be our knee. The third one, uh, I'm gonna call it uh, the heel. And then the, these are the other ones for the foot, so I'm gonna call this uh, foot. And the last one, I might call it toe and maybe put a little note in there saying that this is the end of the chain. Okay, so we have our basic chain of objects that we're gonna be animating, let's say. Uh, let's suppose that we wanna create like a kick on this, uh, with this leg. So if you're using forward kinematics, you don't have to do anything else but animate every single element of what you have in that chain, for example, so if I go and rotate this element, like so, as you can see, I can go back here, create a keyframe like that, and then kick and create another keyframe right there. But at the same time, I would probably would have to make this extend in that way, and maybe the heel rotate in this direction. Oops, not that direction, but this direction. So uh, our leg is extended because it just kicked something. So as you can see, I had to, to keyframe not only my leg, my knee, and my heel, but also some parts of the foot in here. So that's a lot of work when you are creating forward kinematics. Now the inverse kinematics is a, a way to create similar movements like this in a very easy and quick way with just using a goal object. The forward kinematics that you can see, I animated my uh, elements from the hip to the leg, to the knee, to the heel and so forth in a forward fashion. Inverse kinematics is uh, different. You just take the goal and just animate that and all the other elements follow. So I'm just gonna create a, an uh, inverse kinematics chain from uh, my leg to the heel because that's how I'm going to animate it. So I go to the character tags and create an IK chain on the leg. So if I click on the tag, I can see that I have several options in here. And one of them is the end. So it's asking me for what is the end of this chain? And uh, as I told you, the end for that chain would be the heel, and we can see that it created a green line indicating me that uh, there is a link between my leg and my heel, okay? Now, to move it, I still do need to have another object that I need to follow. So the tag has also a goal object that you can create or in this case, you can create a, a goal using this tag. So I'm gonna do that. And because the last uh, bone of my chain is called heel, the goal now is called heel goal, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move it. And now you can see that that movement, whatever I do, it basically creates uh, the, 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 the animation of all the other elements that are within that chain. So I would have to probably animate less keyframes 
using this method. So that's the difference between forward and inverse kinematics. Now we're going to be doing an exercise today of a lamp, uh, of, of the rig of a lamp. Uh, if, if you're taking my class, you probably have this scene already in your materials. And uh, as you can see, all the elements have been simplified. The scene is called O2 Simplified, and it should look something similar to this. As you can see, every single object is a polygonal object already embedded in there. So if, for example, if you select the, this object, all those screws and things like that, they are already embedded in one object. The reason why I did that is because being simplified, we can focus on uh, doing the hierarchy instead of trying to figure out what elements go with that, with what. So we're going to be using a couple of tools that are going to help us, not only in this tutorial, but in other tutorials that might be more complicated than this. Those two tools are called the Reset PSR and the Set Parent tool. The way that you can access them is by going to the window, customization, customize commands, and then here in the name filter, you can uh, type in parent, and you're gonna see the first tool, set parent, right there, almost close to the bottom. So if you don't have it here already in your interface, I suggest uh, that you actually grab it and put it and move it all the way in one of the places that you really want. So. I already have it there, I don't need to do that. The other one, as I mentioned, is called the PSR, Reset PSR, and it's also here in this list. So if you don't have it, grab it and put it in your interface, okay? So uh, we're gonna see what exactly those two uh, new tools uh, do uh, in our tutorial, but in the meantime, we have to look at this lamp and see what could be the hierarchy that we're gonna be using. As an example, I'm gonna go and open uh, the arm that you should also have this scene in your materials. Um, uh, the way that this arm is working, as you can see, the main root is uh, our hierarchy of uh, joints that I have in here. But in here I have the first joint that could be also called the clavicle, let's, let's call it the clavicle, okay? The first uh, of the movement uh, joints that I will be moving is this one, and it's located very close to the shoulder, so I'm gonna call it the shoulder. Then the next one would be the elbow, because it's right there on the, on the elbow, on the bending part of the arm. And here, this one is, would be the, the wrist, Okay, and uh, this would be the arm, or I'm gonna call it just the end joint in here, okay? Because we're gonna concentrate on the, uh, on the IK chain that we're gonna create to bend the arm and stuff like that. The, 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 the hand, or the end, would be animated separately, as you probably already know. The, it doesn't belong to the same chain as the arm chain, so. Since uh, the shoulder is connected to the clavicle that is fixed, we're gonna start our IK here in the shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a character tag, IK, and I, my wrist is gonna be my ending object, so I just drag it to the end of, uh, of my chain, and I can see, yeah, if you notice, uh, there is a green line in there that actually is telling me that indeed is connecting my uh, my uh, shoulder to my wrist, and at the same time, I need to click uh, on the add goal, just like I showed you a minute ago, and it creates a wrist goal, okay? So with that already created, then I can actually move my arm, okay, very easily. If you ever want to bind this, uh, objects together to deform the geometry, that's very simple. Just make sure that you select the mesh first, then press your command key and select the objects or the, the objects, the, the, the bones that are going to affect your geometry. I will not select the end because 
it's not gonna affect it that much. So I'm just selecting the clavicle, the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, and go to the character, commands, and bind. Once you do that, then it gets all connected, and now I can go back to my wrist goal and make sure that I am moving my arm, okay? I know that in class I uh, showed you a little bit more about uh, uh, the vertex map and uh, how to access some tools, but that's a more advanced topic that we didn't get we didn't get too far deep into it. The important part in this class is to understand how you can uh, move the IK chain in here. So taking this as an example or as a as a, as a guide of how we're gonna uh, do the hierarchy in our lamp, we can see that uh, the fixed element, which is the clavicle here, uh, is the parent of the shoulder. The shoulder is the parent of the elbow and so forth until the end. So if we look at our simplified uh, lamp, we can see that the object that we're gonna be moving basically is gonna be this object over here. So that probably it's, uh, you know, uh, if we look the same, if we, if we use the same type of uh, analogy, then probably this is the wrist and this would be the shoulder and this would be the fixed part. So this would be the shoulder, this would be the elbow and this would be our wrist, okay? So with that in mind, let's do that right here. My base, I'm just gonna leave it name base like that, you know. And then this first object, I'm gonna just pull it out of the group in here and name it, I'm gonna call it the shoulder. Then the, I'm gonna do the chain over this side. So let me just show you what exactly I am doing. Uh, this is the fixed part over here. And I'm gonna create the hierarchy in this direction, like so, until the, the rest. In other words, when I create that hierarchy and if I apply the inverse kinematics, remember I'm gonna apply the inverse kinematics to the shoulder, so that means that my chain is gonna go from the shoulder to my wrist in this direction, and we will get a, a green line indicating that we have a connection there. Okay, so that is the way I'm going to be doing the hierarchy in here. So this is my shoulder. Then the, this other object would be, in this case, I'm gonna call it the arm because it's an extension of it. We're not using bones, as you can see, we're not using joints. So I'm using objects which, uh, you know, it's a little different than using the joints. The joints, if you look at them in the arm, they already have their pivot point in the origin of uh, where they are rotating. So we have to keep that in mind, okay? When we go back to our simplify, we're gonna fix that in just a moment, but right now we're naming all these little elements. This one should be probably the forearm, so I'm gonna call it forearm. And as I mentioned, this is my wrist, or the last element of the chain. And now we have these elements that are not connected yet, but as you can see, this one is basically the same as uh, the arm, it's the counterpart, okay? So I'm just gonna bring it over here and call it, this is the arm two. This one happens to be exactly the same as this one, but it's a different object, so I'm just gonna call it forearm two. Okay, so it's forearm two. And uh, the last one, which would be the middle joint, this is our elbow, but as you can see, the elbow needs to rotate here on uh, where this screw is, the joint of the arm and the forearm. So I'm gonna call it elbow. And the last one basically is the shade. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it named like that. I don't wanna get too crazy with names in here, just leave it like that. Uh, now that I have named them correctly, I put them back into their original group that I already had in there. Now the next thing I need to do is make sure that I am parenting 
the elements correctly. So the base is going to be the fixed element. The shoulder is going to be the child of the base. So we're going to be using the tool called set parent. The set parent tool actually, when you select an object, you can click on this tool and then there is a question mark basically asking you what is the parent of this object. So we know the base is the parent, so we click on the base. And if you look at the object manager, we can see that the shoulder now is the, ch the child of the base. So we're going to continue doing exactly the same with these other elements. The parent of the arm is the shoulder. And the parent of this forearm is the arm. And the parent of the wrist is the forearm. So we have created our little hierarchy of these elements. But we haven't included these other guys yet. So if we look at this, this would have to be the parent of the shoulder as well. So click the tool and select the shoulder to be the parent. Now this guy, the elbow, needs to be the parent. It's connected in three different places to the three different objects. But the main object that drives its, its position and rotation is basically this joint over here. So it would be the, the arm. So I'm going to click on set parent and I'm going to make sure that the arm is set as the parent of the elbow. Okay. Now the last one, the forearm, goes in the same direction as this guy over here, but it needs to be parented to the elbow. So click on set parent and the elbow is the one driving its position and rotation. So now everything is connected except the shade. The shade, we can see that the obvious connection should be the wrist. So set the parent to be the wrist. Okay. Now that we have our hierarchy complete, then we can start thinking about the pivot points. The pivot points are very important for that we're going to go to the side view and because everything is going to move together it has to rotate just like it rotates with the arm or the leg see the le the yellow the yellow marks that we see there are basically the rotation pivot points so the pivot points they have to be in the place where where, where everything rotates the same as with the arm you can see those yellow uh, circles, those are basically the pivot points for the joints in this case. But when we're using objects, sometimes the pivot point is not placed correctly. So if we select the base, we can see that the axis is kind of like in the middle. And I would like it to really be on the floor because I want the floor to be my point of reference to put the base on. So. I'm going to enable the Enable Axis Modification tool and make sure that that axis is actually on the floor, right there. Okay, now I go to the next element and the shoulder should rotate from that point and is very close to the center of that screw, which is positioned more or less correctly. The arm, in this case, arm 2, the rotation reference is very offset so if we if I disable this for just a second and show you the difference I can see that the current pivot point is in the center meaning that it's not rotating correctly so I need to move that point let me just do that with the axis modification tool to the same rotation as my shoulder Make sure that it rotates correctly. If I disable this and try to rotate it again, notice that now it should rotate perfectly OK. The next arm, the rotation tool, the rotation uh, pivot point is correctly set up. Uh, the elbow, the elbow actually is not placed correctly. So we need to move that from that point to here. And it should be fine. The forearm seems to be fine as well. Maybe a little tweaking. Not much. The wrist seems to be fine as well. 
yeah it's perfectly fine and the shade the shade uh, actually is offset very much so we need to put it exactly in here okay so we have fixed those oh and the main the you know it says all the parts i want to also make sure that that one is on the floor perfectly just in case i want to move the whole group all together so i want to have the floor as a reference now that i have done it on the side way on the side uh, right side view i just want to make sure that i have all those elements uh, correctly rotating in the right position in the right uh, pivot point but i also have to look at it from either the back or the front so if i select the base again i can see that my pivot point is centered which is good the shoulder to the contrary is offset a little bit so make sure that uh, we move it with the axis modification tool to the center beware not to grab it from uh, these other points uh, these other uh, handles just grab it from the axis the only axis that you want to move it which in this case is the horizontal uh, x axis the arm 2 is fine the arm is not fine so we gotta move it as well the elbow is uh, placed correctly the forearm is correctly the other forearm is fine the wrist it's not correctly done so we put it there and the shade is fine okay so now that we have all those pivot points placed correctly the next thing that we need to do is take uh, every single object and make sure that the positions are frozen because the frozen uh, positions mean that they are uh, placed in the initial position you can see that i'm doing them one at a time in here but you can actually select all of them and freeze them all at the same time okay so now that if you take a look at every single one of them they should be in the zero position the reason why i do that is because if i happen to grab one of these elements and move it accidentally then I can use my PSR uh, tool that I called up uh, earlier and click on it and it should go back to its original position. If the position was different than zero, then it would jump to another position, which is not this one. That's why we did the freeze all transformation. Many times that you make changes to the parent position or these other elements uh, on top of the hierarchy, you have to go back and uh, make sure that you freeze the transformation again if that is your original position okay okay so knowing that we have the hierarchy done now let's go ahead and put the inverse kinematic stack remember that we use the shoulder as our inverse kinematic tag holder so we're going to do exactly the same here in our lamp so objects, tags, character tags, inverse kinematics. And uh, with that, we are gonna use the end. And if you remember, the end is the wrist. And now we can add a goal that is gonna be called the, the wrist goal. And I'm gonna just bring it up all the way up here and uh, the wrist goal i'm just gonna call it the main control so the main control to control basically the movement of my lamp okay now because i did some changes already to the hierarchy as you can see i select everything again make sure i freeze all of them before i do any movements of any objects now we're gonna click on the main control make sure it's frozen all the transformations and move it and we see that we have a hierarchy that it's not working a hundred percent but some of its parts especially the main parts are working properly the ones that i mentioned they were the the main parts for the hierarchy so we need to basically fix these other parts if we look at the lamp and uh, 
think for a minute how this would work. That means that every time we, we modify, for example, in this case, notice that the rotation or the orientation of the shoulder here, uh, the elbow should have the same rotation. That way, it would be keeping the same uh, uh, orientation as uh, the shoulder, and uh, none of this would occur. So let's go ahead and click on our PSR on all these guys. Okay, and we need to apply a restriction tag on the elbow to follow the same direction or rotation of our shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and call up a new tag in the character tags called the constraint. Now the constraint, to constrain the rotation of that element, we enable the PSR because that's the position, scale, and rotation. When you do that, then you get another tab in here and that tab basically give us certain options. I can see down below that it will restrict the position, but I don't want it except that I want the rotation. If you apply at this moment the shoulder to the target object, you'll notice that the elbow jumps. We don't want that to happen because the elbow is oriented differently than the shoulder. So we have to basically tell the offset here. If this offset is not open, make sure that you open it. We want to maintain the original offset that the elbow has in, uh, in regards to the shoulder. So click on this tag again, and now bring the shoulder and place it in the target. And now it should work properly. If I test again my main control, and move it, I can see that now that object is oriented or having exactly the same direction, behavior, as the shoulder, which is exactly what I was looking for. I still have to do the wrist the same way, so I call up the text, constraint, enable my PSR, make sure I maintain the original offset, disable the position, uh, restriction and then bring the elbow because now I am targeting the elbow for the wrist and now let's go ahead and test and our hierarchy is getting better not quite there yet because we still have two little guys that are not behaving behaving correctly so those guys are this one and this one and if you remember in the beginning we mentioned that uh, this guy has to be uh, aiming in the same direction as uh, its sibling, the same as uh, the arm two and arm one. So let's start with arm two here, and I'm gonna add a tag, character tag, constraint, PSR again, maintain the same, the, the offset uh, that it has, and disable position because we only wanna use the rotation of the arm. Okay, and we're gonna do exactly the same to our forearm, but in this case, we're gonna use the forearm as our target. So, in the forearm, we enable the character tags, constraint, okay, PSR, and I wanna maintain the original offset, disable the position, and bring the forearm as the target object. Now, if I test this uh, uh, rig, now it should work properly because all the constraints and all the uh, links have been made and it should work fine. Of course, we have some issues that, you know, if you move your control beyond the extension of what the lamp can actually handle, you're gonna distort many things. But overall, the, the whole thing is working properly. I want to make sure that the main control is, is more visible than what it is right now. So I select it, go to the object. Instead of a dot, I want to have a circle and maybe larger, okay? So even if I'm not uh, looking at the hierarchy, I can easily go with my selection tool, select it and still create some animation, okay? So that's what the rig should do. 
Okay, so basically that is the main rig at this moment. The, the other thing that uh, I probably need to do with the main control is the following. If, uh, as you can see, I have the three axes in there. So if I move it on this axis, it behaves properly. If I move it on this axis, it behaves properly. But if I move it on the X axis, that lamp shouldn't move in that direction. So I want to constrain that as well. Uh, so I'm going to click on the PSR to bring it back to its original position. And what I want to do is apply another tag to the main control. And that tag is actually inside the Cinema 4D tags. It's called the protection. The protection uh, basically it locks everything. Once you put it in there, it locks everything. I cannot move my object. So we need to change some of its parameters. And one of them is uh, the first one, the position. It is locked, but in reality, we don't want to lock it. We want to limit it. So we want to limit the, this orientation, this uh, axis, which is the, the X axis. But we don't want to limit the X or the Y. So what we can do is disable X and Y I'm sorry, Y and Z, and leave limited X to a zero centimeters in minimum and maximum. Meaning that if I, if I try to move this main control with my move tool, I am only moving it in those two axes that I allowed to, to move it. And I will never encounter the same problem of distortion of the lamp, okay? So I achieved that, and uh, I think that's it uh, for this tutorial. I hope uh, you guys find it useful, and I hope to see you uh, next time. Okay, bye-bye.